Hi, so in this lecture, I'd like to talk to you about electric field lines. So electric field lines give us a way of representing the electric field in a picture. Now, in our last lecture where I introduced the concept of the electric field, um, I already showed you a couple of pictures, all right? So here, though, we're going to really take a deep dive into what some of these pictures would look like, okay? So the idea is that you have electric fields. Now, remember, electric fields are vectors, and so they have a direction. And the way that we typically have represented vectors in terms of pictures in the past has been with arrows. And so we're going to stick with that convention. We're going to draw arrows in the direction that the electric field points, which remember is the direction that a positive test charge would move in the presence of that field, okay? Now we're gonna represent electric field lines in a couple of ways. Um, so we're going to have the number or the density of the electric field lines piercing through the area. The density of those lines is gonna represent the strength of the field, okay? Um, also, sometimes you'll see the length of the field lines representing the strength of the field. So if you draw a longer line or more lines, then that can mean that you have a stronger electric field in that region. And then the arrow will point in the direction of the field. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these pictures so that you see. All right, so here we have um, two surfaces, A and B, okay? And you can see that the field lines start off packed pretty close together, and then they diverge and start to spread out as they flow through A and B, okay? And so you can see that B is a larger area than A. So although they have the same number of field lines, the area B is actually larger, which means that the density of the field lines through B is is um less than the density of the field lines through A. In other words, they're packed tighter as they go through A than they are through B, right? Where the field lines are more spread apart, okay? So this shows a non-uniform electric field, one that diverges and spreads out. Okay, now let's talk about what we learned last time with electric fields and which way they point with respect to positive sources and negative sources. Now, remember, we talked about this last time. Electric field lines point radially outward from positive point source charges, okay? So here we show a positive um, charge plus Q here in an orange or reddish kind of color, and you've got your field lines in orange pointing radially outward. You can see that the field lines are tighter together near the charge than they are as you get further away where the distance in between uh, field lines gets larger. It gets more spread out as you get further away. And that's actually true. Remember that our equation for the electric field due to a point charge is kq over r squared, where r is the distance away from the charge. So as r gets larger, right, your electric field gets smaller because it's inversely proportional to r, okay? Okay, now if you have a negative source charge, right, a negative source point charge, I guess I should say, then the electric field lines are going to point towards, whoops, point towards that negative source charge. Okay, so ready, electric field lines point radially inward towards negative point charge and radially outward away from um, positive point charges. Okay, and remember they point in that direction because the electric field is defined as where you put a positive test charge, which way would it go? And so since the positive test charge would be attracted to the negative source charge, it points towards the negative source charge, all right? And also yet again, emphasize the fact that the field lines here are closer together, closer to the charge than they are further away. So the electric field strength dies off as you get further away from that positive, from that negative charge. All right, now let's say that we have um, more than one charge. Okay, so now let's envision what would happen under those circumstances. Now there's all kinds of great demos that we could do if we were an in-person class, but for here, this will have to suffice. We have a positive charge and we have a negative charge. Now these charges are equal in magnitude. So let's just say the one on the right is plus two nanocoulombs, the one on the left is minus two nanocoulombs, okay? Um, and then they're, they're some short distance apart from one another. Okay, now what would happen is in between the charges, if you brought a little uh, positive source charge, it would be repelled away from the positive charge and accelerate towards the negative charge, right? It would go to the left. And so the field lines there in the dead middle, you see 
must all point straight left. So if you look at a point equidistant from both charges um, and along that plane that uh, bisects them, they're all pointing straight left at that point. See that? Okay, now, if however, you're to the right, then um, even though you would be attracted to this negative charge over here, if you're a positive charge, you'd be attracted to this one, that you're closer to the positive charge, right? And so because you're closer to the positive charge, you'd be pushed to the right, right? Now, likewise on the left, even though you'd be repelled from this positive charge over there, you're further away from it. And so you're still gonna feel a net force of attraction to the right towards that negative charge, okay? So along the kind of X axis here, if you will, you're going to have uh, a force that would point to the right as you approach that negative charge. And then it would point left, right? As it crosses the negative charge, the force would be to the left. And then it would be to the right again as you're repelled from the positive charge as you move to the right of the charge. So that's how the, the little positive chest charge would feel there along that line. Now, if you're at some strange angle, okay, let's say that you're here up and to the right away from this positive charge, you'd be repelled from the positive charge, sure, right? but you'd also feel attracted to this negative charge. And so what's gonna happen is the field lines above them are going to loop around, okay? So that you're pushed up and away from the positive charge, but then circling back and coming back to that negative charge. So that's how those field lines are gonna go. Likewise, down here at the bottom, you'd be repelled away from the positive charge, but then pulled back in towards the negative charge. And so the field lines loop as you get off the x-axis um, away from the positive charge and end on the negative charge. So that's why the field lines do what they do there. Okay, um, so let's ignore that. Okay, now let's say that you have two charges that um, are equal in magnitude, but also equal in the type of charge. So here we have two positive charges. All right. Okay, so here we have two positive charges. Now what's gonna happen is, um, if you're a positive test charge, you would be repelled from both of these things, okay? Now, if you were at point C here, this would be an equilibrium point. C is equidistant from each of the positive charges. And so at that point, the force on you would be zero, but holy cow, would, be, would it be unstable? Because you're gonna wanna fly off. You're gonna wanna get away, right? You're repelled from both of these things. Your only way out along C is up, Okay, <laughs> so that would be if you're even slightly disturbed the direction that you would go. So if you got disturbed even slightly, you would probably want to go up or if you're slightly disturbed downward, you would want to fly down and away. So that's why the field lines point the direction that they do, curving away from the positive charges from both of them, okay, and then pointing upward. And then also um, they're gonna curve away from each other because you're repelled equally from both of them. And so if you're slightly to the left, you're gonna be pushed for example, if you're slightly below and to the left, you're gonna be pushed down and left. If you're slightly below and to the right, you're gonna be pushed down and right, and then so on and so forth. So I think that that makes sense if you kind of think of what's happening with all of these. Now notice here in all of these pictures that field lines do not cross, okay? The field lines do not cross. If the field lines crossed at any given point, then that would mean that your positive test charge was indecisive and didn't know which way it wanted to go. It could go this way or it could go that way. Test charges aren't indecisive. They're not like people. They know exactly which way they wanna go at any given time. So field lines don't cross. Okay, now if you have unequal amounts of charge, okay, then you're going to have, for the larger charge, more field lines, because remember, the density of the field lines is proportional to the strength of the field, and larger charges have larger fields, okay, stronger fields. So here, what you've got is you're going to have, yet again, field lines leaving the positive charge and ending on the negative charges because that's what positive and negative charges do. They point away from positive and towards negative, okay? Um, but you're gonna have twice as many field lines leaving the positive charge as you have ending on the negative charge. Does that make sense? Because here the plus two Q is two, a factor of two larger than the minus Q in terms of its magnitude. So twice as many field lines leaving the positive charge as ending on the negative charge. Also, the effect, the net effect of a plus two Q and a minus Q charge together 
would be repulsion, right? Because um, even though you have a positive positive test charge wanting to be attracted to that minus Q, it's going to be more repelled from the plus two Q than it is attracted to the minus Q. So the net effect for the whole thing has to be repulsion, if that makes sense. Okay, has to be repulsion. And a top positive charge would have to get pretty close um, to that minus Q charge and on the right side of the minus two Q charge. In other words, here it would have to be on the right hand side in order to feel that attraction um, in order to end up there. Okay, and the net effect is going to be repulsion. Okay, so here's the rules for drawing electric field lines if you're asked to do so. Remember that lines begin and point away from positive charges and they end and point towards negative charges. If one of the charges is bigger than the other in the drawing, then you're gonna have to have some of the field lines ending up infinitely far away. In other words, you would look at the net charge, right? If I summed, the net charge for this whole system of plus two Q and minus Q, I'd end up with plus Q, okay? So the net effect has to look, if you're infinitely far away, like it's just a plus Q charge, right? It'd be like looking at these charges through a telescope. What would you really see if they started to get blurred together? What you'd really see is plus Q. And so that means that you have to end up with what looks like, if you're really far away, a plus Q distribution of charges. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so. Um, you've got to have an excess. If there's an imbalance in the type of charges, you've got to have an excess. If you have a balance and you have a plus Q and a minus Q and the net total charge for the system is zero, then infinitely far away, it would look like nothing. So that would mean that it's got to start on the positive and end on the negative in total and all the field lines have to loop from one to the other, okay? Now, when you're looping, though, make sure that no two field lines cross, because if the field lines cross, then that means that your positive test charge is indecisive, and positive test charges are not indecisive. They know exactly what they're doing. Also remember that field lines are just representations of the field. They're not really arrows in space, okay? <laughs> I think you all understand that, but I feel the need to say it. It's just a pictorial representation used to kind of qualitatively and not quantitatively describe the field. All right. Well, I hope that made sense, this brief introduction, and um, I'll see you around.